information resources and faster and more reliable technology. Higher performance communication resources and faster and more reliable. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Did you guys all have a good lunch? Did you guys have lunch? Yes. My name is Jeff Mann. I'm a security evangelist with Tenable Network Security, which means, yes, I do work with Jack Daniel. I uh, have a very similar role, except for I get uh, uh, the dubious pleasure of being much more anonymous than he is. Uh, I don't have quite the beard that he does. Um, this is my information. If by the end of the talk you're interested in following up with me, feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Twitter at Mr. Jeff Mann or my email is simply jman at tenable.com. The purpose of this talk today is to, first of all, explain to you why I lay claim to being a Jedi Master, uh, talk about a problem that I've been noticing in the industry for the past year and a half or so while I've been doing this uh, speaking thing for Tenable, um, try to provide a little bit of insight of what I think we can do to improve, what I think's missing, and uh, you know, hopefully make it a little bit entertaining, uh, get, I want it to be inter as interactive as possible, um, and really just try to get to a place where we're a little bit better off by the end of the talk in terms of how we're approaching this thing called uh, security and how we're getting that message out to uh, our employers, our customers, uh, our neighbors and friends. Out of curiosity, by show of hands, how many have seen the new Star Wars movie that came out last September, uh, December? Great. How many people have seen the original Star Wars? How many people saw the original Star Wars when it was released in theaters in 1977? More than I expected. Great. So, um, a long time ago, uh, there was this movie called Star Wars, and I sort of created this talk because uh, this phrase came out of the whole Star Wars lexicon called the Jedi Mind Trick. Does everybody know what the Jedi Mind Trick is? These are not the droids you're looking for. The art of making somebody else do something that you want them to do, whether they know it or not. It occurred to me that uh, I shouldn't give a whole talk on the Jedi mind trick without making sure everybody knew that I was talking about, since this is a talk at the end of the day about communication. Um, Star Wars, the, the franchise is owned by Disney, so I'm not allowed to use, unless we pay a ton of royalties, use any imagery. So. Uh, this is somewhat movie and uh, tech, uh, media themed, but there will be no Star Wars uh, references directly in the talk. Um, throw this out there right at the very beginning. Um, I've been in the security business for over 30 years, and I have got my start at that place. Um, if you guys want to talk to me later, if you want to buy me drinks, I might talk to you about uh, my views on Snowden or the views on uh, the recent FBI uh, Apple thing, uh, but you have to buy me a drink or two first. I got my start at NSA uh, as a manual cryptanalyst. I worked with these things, one-time pads. In the old days, uh, it was all about communication security, and the communications were either encrypted before they were transmitted. If they were encrypted before they were transmitted, you could send them anyway, radio, telephone, uh, actually Morse code, code used to be used. Uh, even when I was working there. Um, but obviously technology was advancing and manual crypto systems were changing. And I actually got involved at the very beginning in some of the first software-based cryptography, which was simply implementations of a one-time pad. To try to put some reference on it, everybody has seen the movie, well, have you seen the movie, uh, and now I'm blanking on the name. Thank you, The Imitation Games. Everybody seen, the, anybody seen that movie? So you know what that is? It's an Enigma machine. When I started at NSA in the mid-80s, the fact that uh, the U.S. and its allies, the U.K., had, had cracked the crypto on that was still a secret. Why was it still a secret? Because there were still countries using it. Um, it was not declassified that we had broken that, which happened way back in World War II until the late 80s. So just trying to put some reference on it that I'm uh, almost as old, but not quite as old as Jack Daniel. I left almost 20 years ago, go out into the, the private sector, having learned how to do some penetration testing, which later became known as red teaming within NSA. Wanted to go save the world and make, make more money, go out into the private sector. 
Um, so I became a pen tester on the outside, and so, you know, kind of at the very beginning of this whole internet web security thing. So back in those days, it was teaching people how to, you know, if you're going to be on the internet, you really should have a firewall. You should really start thinking about having some sort of a security program, and essentially all the things we're talking about today. You know, changing passwords, changing default settings, removing hidden default passwords. You know, this should all sound familiar because we've been talking about this for over 20 years ago. Um, I guess I made enough people angry at, enough at some point that somehow I stumbled into PCI and I ended up being a QSA for 10 years. Uh, I like to call that my PCI purgatory days. Um, but Tenable saved me about two and a half years ago. They actually hired me to be a PCI subject matter expert and to try to help the company, you know, help to help sell into the PCI marketplace, but also because uh, of my extensive experience, they said, you know, we want you to hit the road and, and do the speaking circuit as well, which is why I'm here today. I was giving a talk over the last year called the State of Information Security. That's, that was for the hacker cons. If I, if I was at other industries, I'd call it cybersecurity. And my message was essentially nothing changed. But as I was going to different conferences and hearing other speakers speaking, I, I, I kept hearing some themes emerge. And the biggest theme that I was, and the vibe I was getting from all the talks that I went to was, you know, this community, particularly the B-Sides hacker tech community, we know a lot about how the technology works, and we know a lot about the security aspects. But if you look at the, if you look at the media, uh, it seems clear that something's not working, that our message is somehow not getting out to the people within companies and organizations that need to hear the message. Why? because major breaches are still happening. And they're happening in all, pr in all sectors, in all verticals, in all industries. Something seems to be missing. Um, this meme came out just a couple weeks ago, and I think this illustrates one of the problems that we have in the industry, which I will be bold enough to, to, to mention to you guys. Um, sometimes we have an ego. Sometimes when we are smarter than others and we know more than others, sometimes we, you know, we get a little bit of an ego. Um, I think that's part of the problem. So my basic premise is we need to learn as a community how to communicate better to all those other people that are needing to hear and know what we know. And I've actually been to several talks over the last year that attempted to do that, and, and there were some good elements in those talks, but I thought there was something a little bit missing still. And I've been a consultant for 20 years. I've spent 20 years going into literally hundreds of different companies, uh, different environments, different um, you know, hostile and non-hostile audiences, but always with the goal of I'm a security expert or I, I know a little bit more about security than you do. I'm here to teach you, educate you. In the PCI sense, I need to get you to a point of compliance. Of course, I always wanted them to be secure and I would make them compliant, but that's another talk. Um, but essentially, I've been in a role of educating and awareness training in, in my role of a consultant for 20 years. So I thought, you know, there must be things that I do that smart people have figured out techniques, but, but these are things that are probably worthy of, of sharing with others as a way to learn how to communicate differently and better. I also think that sometimes a lot of us don't really have a lot of opportunity to speak. You know, uh, there's the stereotype that the, the hacker types kind of stay in closed rooms, usually without windows and they're, they're happy to be in front of their technology, and you probably know people like this, maybe you are people like this, but put these types of people sometimes in front of a, a small audience, in front of people that they don't know, a, a large audience. They don't necessarily uh, have a lot of good communication skills, they're not comfortable with speaking. So the goal of this talk is to try to, to bring up some points, of uh, tips and indicators of how you might learn to talk better. And that's essentially what I'm trying to get at is what I think is missing. So, for example, I think it's important when you're speaking to an individual or a group to get to know them. Now, I've seen a talk in the last year where basically they said, well, you know, you've got Google, go out and find out everything you can find out about that person, uh, including social security number. You don't need to go that far. But it's helpful to know that the person might be interested in sports or they're not interested in sports or, you know, maybe their kids are on ball teams or, Maybe they're pet owners. Maybe they, they love skiing. Try to get to know a little bit about them because that gives you a, a little bit of an idea of where they're coming from. And it gives you also some uh, tips on later when you're trying to communicate with them 
uh, common reference points or knowing where they're coming from. So in, as an example, um, by show of hands, how many people think the greatest hacker movie ever made is Black Hat? Good, nobody ever raises their hand for that. We'll skip over to War Games. Anyone? One person, two, three. Sneakers. The overwhelming favorite. What does that tell us about this audience? What's, what is significantly different about the movie Sneakers than, for example, the movie War Games, which is my personal favorite? More technical? I think there's also uh, the introduction of social engineering in Sneakers, much more so than War Games, which, as things get better in, in the security world, you have to learn more social engineering techniques to be successful. Anybody think Hackers is the greatest movie, hacker movie of all time? What if Angelina Jolie hadn't been in it? <laughs> all right. Well, I'm, in the interest of time, I'm trying to be expedient here. But swordfish? Anyone? <laughs> Halle Berry. It's all about hacking. But to have something like that, if you're speaking in a group, large or small, some kind of icebreaker gives you an indication a little bit of where the people are coming from. You know, this crowd says sneakers, so I know this crowd largely is thinking about social engineering. Maybe they're a little bit deeper in than my old favorite war games, which is how I used to hack, which is over a modem. Um, the next thing is I, I have learned to listen over the years, um, which sounds maybe counterintuitive, but the best way to learn how to communicate is to learn to listen. And that's in all walks of life. That, that's no matter where you are and what you're doing. Um, it's important for several reasons. Uh, I think one of our biggest problems is, and I think it's pretty well understood, we tend to speak a different language than other people in organizations and other people in the industry. We have a hacker speak. We have a technology speak. Um, I, I saw a TV show the other night, and it wasn't a, a technology show, but uh, there was a scene where a waiter brought some dessert out, and the person said, what is it? And, and the waiter says, this is raspberry pie. Had nothing to do with the show, but I'm thinking the writer has to know techies, and he put that in there just as kind of an Easter egg. And even an Easter egg is hacker speak. So learning to listen means you're learning the language of the people that you're talking to, because you have to be able to put what you know in terms that they understand at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's not okay, we were just talking about this at lunch. If, if you're speaking to a deaf person, raising your voice and speaking slowly doesn't do a whole lot of good. If they don't understand your language, they're not gonna get it. If they speak a foreign language, how many times have you seen this? You try to speak slowly and loudly and that person that doesn't know your language, somehow they're gonna mag magically understand what you're saying. It doesn't work. The only thing that works is to learn their language. We're Americans, they're supposed to learn our language, but that's a different story. Um, not a movie, but it's all about frog protection, right? Frog protection, we're on the same page. This is a TV commercial, do you have it out west? Um, when, you, when you learn to speak their language, you're learning the language of the business, if you're working at a company, if, you're, if it's a customer, you're learning what their motivations are, what their drivers are. Um, these are all necessary things. Um, it takes persistence sometimes. You know, you have to keep at it. it take, I think it takes practice. Uh, I used to, in my years of consulting, uh, used to sit around the dinner table with my family and try to explain things to them. And none of them are really technical. But if I could get to a point where they were understanding what I was talking about, then I thought I was ready to go to the customer. And usually that's where their frustration would begin because um, I didn't have that much time. Um, tell stories. You know, I, I said, you know, understand their background, understand where they're coming from. Try to pick the stories that make sense to them. Um, sports analogies, you hear them all the time, but not everybody's a sports enthusiast. Uh, I've been in audiences, this is gonna sound sexist, but you know, an audience uh, that's a group of women, they may not be into football. So they may not know sports analogies re related to football as, as an example. Um, it's really interesting if you go to a foreign country and that's when I start to notice all the idioms and axioms and colloquialisms that I have as an American. And as I'm saying them, I'm realizing 
you know, people in the UK, they don't know American football, so they're not going to get the football analogy anyway. So what does this mean in terms of soccer and real football and so on and so forth? Anyway, for fun, uh, anybody know what movie that is? Just shout it out, Big Fish, very good. Um, I'm a cryptanalyst by trade, and I've been to many talks uh, about crypto, and you know, crypto's in the news lately about iPhones and things like that. Um, but you start going to technical talks about elliptic curve cryptography and symmetric and asymmetric cryptography and public key and private key, you start to lose people very quickly. So I, I try to break it down into very simple terms. Even if my simple terms aren't even technically accurate sometimes, if I can get the point across and the people that are receiving understand, oh, you mean encryption means you take something I can read and turn it into something I can't read, and there's something in the middle going on. Yeah, that's all they really need to understand sometimes. And then you can start talking about the costs associated with it and, and the benefits and the pros and the cons. Um, I think it's essential if you're in your own company or if you're, you know, if you're a consultant and you're working with other companies, you have to understand their language, which is very often their business. Um, it's great to be as secure as you can be. I used to get customers all the time telling me, well, we don't need DOD level security because they knew I had a DOD background because we just sell women's underwear or we just sell shoes or you know, the CEO from Target when they were breached a couple years ago, he was quoted as saying, we sell hammers. Why should we care about security? Um, you can disagree with that, but you also have to find a balance. You have to find a, a way to work that attitude and educate them and enlighten them, but also help them to connect and, and sort of find a middle ground. Movie? Thank you. I'm a people person. In fact, I think I have that role in my company now as a side job, which is embarrassing. Um, this is also essential. You can think you've done a great job explaining a concept. Ask them, what did you just hear me say? You'd be amazed at how many people, times people will come back and you can realize very quickly, wow, you had no idea what I was talking about. Let me try again. And don't try again with the same story, with the same technique, with the same uh, language. You gotta try something different. You gotta try it from a different angle. Uh, and again, the goal is to put it in language that they understand. Movie? This is the stumper for most. Nope. One of my favorites, starred Gina Davis. Long kiss, good night. Very good. Never make an assumption because you make an ass out of you and umption. <laughs> Oftentimes, when you're presenting, especially as a consultant, you have to give results. You've gone in and done a pen test, a vulnerability assessment, some sort of an analysis, and you've got to you got to explain it to them. Um, I, have, I learned this technique actually from my father, uh, but uh, I always found it was good to start off with, you know, say something good, like, you know, your website has a lot of pretty colors. Um, but, and then you move on to the bad, you know, we found some issues, and then you, you drop the bomb on them, and the ugly, uh, you know, there's some default passwords in there. Uh, so the good, the bad, and the ugly is the movie, that one's a dead giveaway. Um, Oh, my dad, I have to share with this, uh, this part of it. Uh, when I was a kid, I never got straight A's, but one time I came home with a report card, like six A's and one B. It's the best I'd ever done. My dad, first thing he said to me was, why'd you get a B? Scarred me for life. I'm still suffering from it. <laughs> so um, where do we go from here? Uh, practice, try to, uh, try to attempt these steps. Um, you may think it's daunting and impossible. How many people want to take the red pill? How many people want to take the blue pill? Uh, it's hard. It, it is not easy to communicate with other people and get them to a point of understanding. Those of us that have been in the industry a while probably know that you know, all too well. Uh, I would say don't give up. Um, it may seem sometimes like it's not worth it. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody know what the movie is? Yeah, very good. Uh, everybody know what this movie is? War Games. Now the message of the War Games of, was, you know, the moral to the story was don't play the game. Um, because of my cryptanalytic background, I prefer to think of this more as a puzzle. Puzzles have often more than one solution.
but there is a solution. So, you know, if one thing doesn't work, try something again, try something different. Um, don't even think of security as a game. Think of it as a puzzle. And recognize at the end of the day that it takes time, it's difficult to do. Um, when you're, especially when you're within an organization and you're trying to change corporate culture and trying to get them to think more securely because they have to, um, that, takes, that takes time, it takes hard work. It's like steering the, there you go. So this is a whirlwind, you know, 30 years of experience into a 20, 30 minute talk, but um, be the change you wanna be. Try stepping out of your comfort zone if you haven't done this before and communicating. You can do it in a small group setting, do it with a friend. You know, say, hey, I wanna run something by you. Try to find somebody that isn't as smart as you or isn't in the tech crowd. Try to tech crowd. Try to find somebody that, that's outside and say, hey, I want to run something by you. Give it a whirl. See if it works. Ask them what they've heard. Try it. Um, I mentioned the, the, the ego thing at the very beginning with that, you know, I wish I was stupid. Um, yes, sometimes we do know more than others, but a lot of it's just education and awareness. Um, I find it challenging to try to teach people and get them to a point of understanding. And I feel like if I can't do that well, maybe I'm not as smart as I think I am. So that keeps me humble. Um, I used to, and I still talk about how I'm bilingual. I've developed over the years the language of the tech community, but I also speak the language of the business non-technical community. And I have found it essential to get things accomplished in, in my customers and in companies I've worked for to be able to communicate with the non-technical community. Probably more so important than talking to the tech crowd. Because it's really easy to talk to the people that pat you on the back and say, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, I agree with you. Um, you know, to me, after 30 some years in the business, I think what really is gonna make a difference ultimately because everything we've done up to this point doesn't seem to be working very well and the technology is certainly not getting easier, we still need to be able to teach and educate what are still the basic fundamentals of security, knowing what it is you're trying to protect, knowing that you have to do certain things, knowing that there is no such thing as ultimate security, and so on and so forth. We have a few minutes left. Does anybody have any questions? This is your chance to communicate. You have, you must have come in late. You have to ask me that after you've purchased me an alcoholic beverage. I'm a rat. <laughs> My Jedi mind trick is buy, buy me alcohol, buy me alcohol, and I'll ask Snowden. Any other questions, comments? Um, you, you that were older that saw the original Star Wars, agree, disagree? We're good. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the comment is, if you want to get some opportunities to practice, join your Toastmasters club local Toastmasters Club, look it up, find one, see if there is one. My immediate question is, what is a Toastmasters Club? So it's a group that gets together and tries to practice communication, and it almost sounds like there's a little bit of improv in there. Yeah, okay, very good. Great. If any of you guys happen to be more on the East Coast uh, later in June, um, I'm actually pu putting together a training course to try to actually put some of these techniques into practice to try to give the opportunity to teach a little bit some of these communication skills. But more importantly than teaching, I wanna give people the opportunity to put it into practice in, in a safe, comfortable environment. I should look up Toastmasters and, and steal their mojo. 
Anyway, that'll be at Circle City Con uh, in Indianapolis in June. That's it. Thank you.